All right, now we're at plank number four, station one. Plank number four. So what I'm doing right now is building a table of offsets. And what I'm doing is taking all the measurements out of the drawings and enter them into this little block right here. This little block has got all the dimensions that I need in order to build the boat. I could build the boat from this little drawing or this little table of offsets rather than even have the drawings in front of me when I'm building it at all. So I've got to record all these dimensions and uh, what we've got is we've got widths down here. This would be like the widths of the bottom. This would be the widths of it at plank number five at the different stations up here. I've got the stations at the top, I've got the widths here, and I've got uh, heights right here. So what we're gonna do is take a scale rule and go into the other drawing, and we're gonna pick up some of the dimensions. And where we are right now is at station number three and plank number three, and we're talking about heights, not widths. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna get a height from the drawing at station number three and plank number three. And what I'm gonna do is roll my paper up here out of the way and expose my drawing, and I'm after the measurement that crosses station number three at the top of, this would be the shear, this would be five, four, and this is three right here. So we're after the plank and line three at station number three, that position right there. And what it is, is a height measurement. So I'm gonna take my scale rule and set it right down here on inch and a half to the foot. I'm gonna put zero right on that planking line and I'm gonna read the measurement at the baseline right down here. And what I've got is 10 inches and a quarter. So that would be 10 inches and two eighths. Actually, as I look at it right now, I'm getting 10 inches and 3 eighths. So it would be 0, 10, and 3. So now I'm going to go to my table of offsets and enter that measurement in the correct block right here. This would be 0 feet, 10 inches, and 3 eighths right there. And obviously now we're going to go after the next one. So we would be at station number 4 at the top of plank number three. So let's roll the drawing back up out of the way again and pick up my scale rule again and we're going to go after this measurement right here. Now I'm holding my scale rule in a little bit different position here. I've got it down off the board here but it really doesn't matter how it's done as long as it comes out accurately. And what I have right here is zero feet, eleven and four eighths. So I'm gonna enter that into the block. Roll our dimensions right back down. We're gonna enter that right here. Zero feet, 11 inches, and four eighths, or a half an inch. See, so what we're gonna do now is just simply continue to go on here. We're gonna finish up plank number three. They're gonna go right into plank number four. Now I've taken the lines drawings and the table of offsets that I generated on my drawing board for the Total Boat Sport Dory over to another table and I'd call this the loft table because it isn't a loft floor. It's built of some sawhorses only with some weight on the sawhorses holding it down nice and tight against the floor and then some barrels across like this and then some longitudinals. These are just some two by sixes just to stiffen the thing up a little bit couple layers of 3 8 plywood up here on the top. Nothing's connected or glued or fastened off or anything. It's just laying here. It's a temporary situation, but it serves the purposes perfectly. What it is is a table, because about this size, I really don't need to crawl around on the floor to blow these sections up full size. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm drawing the sections right on the drawing board. You can see them right here. This is the first one. This is the bottom of the boat, and this is the first planks going right up around the side at section number three, right in the middle of the boat, the biggest section of the boat right there. I've drawn in section number two already and section number one as well, but I haven't inked them in yet. And I'm gonna do a little bit of inking, but uh, the other thing I'd like to say about the drawing board here is there's a lot of things about this drawing board that really have to be, for me to be able to work with it even at all. One of the things is it has to have a light coming from over there because 
You can't allow there to be a shadow on the other side of anything you're trying to line up with a line. You just can't line it up with a line. Like I said, it's gonna blow it up from an inch and a half to the foot to full size on this table. And I've done a number of the sections already and inked one of them in, and I'm gonna do a little bit more work on it right before your eyes here. But basically, I'd like to explain to you what I'm doing and why. Well, in the first place, I'm gonna check all over again these two drawings, one against the other, heights against heights, you know, widths against widths, and make sure that they haven't made any mistakes as they generate it. I did make a couple of mistakes transferring the measurements from the drawing into the table of offsets, but that's no embarrassment to me because I'm gonna set the whole thing up differently anyhow. What's worse than making those mistakes was the way I actually numbered it out here because I numbered the stations one, two, three, four, five, and that's not the way the stations are on the drawing. They're numbered from right to left, one, two, three, four, five, backwards over here. So that makes it a little bit confusing. And the other problem I really had with it was the way I numbered the blocks on the left-hand side here. These I had numbered plank by plank. It would have been plank number one, two, three, four. That was confusing because you're taking the measurements from the top edge of the plank in the other views. You don't have to consider what plank it is. What you have to do is consider what line it is. And that is the overlap, or where this plank meets this plank. And this is the bottom. This is one, two, three, four, and the shear. So I've got it numbered like that. Now when I go to the drawing, it's very easy for me to tell where I am. So what I decided to do was number this line by line. This is line number one. This is the bottom line, which is the very bottom, right here. And then line number one, two, three, took the confusion right out of it. That measurement is lined up with the line. It's not on a line, but it is the measurement of a line. And I can tell you for sure that it does make it a lot easier. And as I check this, and as I do this full size, I'm filling the measurements into this new table of offset. So I think that's pretty cool right there. And uh, one of the things I'd like to show you is Rather than uh, take the measurements with a pair of dividers out of this drawing, I can just lift the dimensions right out of this drawing very easily with my uh, scale rule here. So I can say like that shear is one foot nine inches because I got one foot nine inches on the scale rule. And all I really have to do is transfer that from the baseline to the height on number three right here. And I have to do it to every corner. I have to measure heights and I have to measure widths. Now, on the drawing board, when I generated this little drawing, it was actually pretty easy because I had what you call a drafting machine. And uh, it's a little straight edge that as you move it up and down, it stays nice and straight. And I don't have that over here. And it did make it a little tricky, I have to tell you. Uh, I have to measure heights on both ends and then put a straight edge through them and weight it down and make sure it's on the lines. Just that's tricky enough and then draw little sections of straight line across to represent heights, and then I can measure off my center line to represent the widths. So that's what I have to do, and that's what I'm doing, and I'm getting all the height measurements and all the width measurements on every one of these corners and transferring them into the drawing, and uh, it's coming out pretty nicely. So uh, I'm pretty happy about that, and uh, I've got everything I need right here. What I would do would be make a height measurement and then I would circle it. I'd put this uh, little spine weight up close to it because otherwise you get confused about where you're at on every drawing. I'd move this one into that little position right there. Then I'd take a straight edge like this and I'd put it straight across the drawing like so. Draw a line right straight across like that and then I'd measure my width on that line. And the thing about the width is Although I have measurements on this aluminum rule, I'm not so sure that it's accurate, and I haven't even checked it, but one of the problems is, is that the measurements up here an eighth of an inch off the table makes it very tricky to transfer any kind of a measurement. So what I do is I usually take this rule and kind of move it kind of parallel to the line that I'm trying to work with, and then I'll pick up this. This is a section of tape measure that I've cut off, and I can put a one foot mark on the center line very easily right in the middle and get my measurements and transfer the measurements very, very easily. So this is a pretty neat little thing right here. And all it is, like I said, is a piece of old tape measure that's probably not too much good for anything else anymore. And I've just taken and 
cut it off on the end. You've got to cut the hook off one end and the box off the other end so they're not plaguing you when you're trying to lay it down on the table here. So that's how I transfer the measurements in widths. And once I'm satisfied and checked it two or three times, then I'll ink it in from there to there. So that's what I'm up to. I'm trying to draw this drawn full size. And then what I'm going to do later is use this drawn to generate the pieces that make the molds that I'm going to use to build the boat.